Today we celebrate the passion of St. John the Baptist for his death, his martyrdom in reality. So he was martyred because he proclaimed the truth. In today's Gospel reading, it's interesting that we note that Herod liked to listen to John. It's almost like he could sense that there was truth in what John was saying. But of course, Herod was blinded by his passion, in particular his lust. And in fact, it's his lust that caused him to take his brother's other wife as his own. And it was also lust that foolishly made him offer even half of his kingdom to the daughter of Herodias who danced for him and enticed him by means of her dancing. So he's obviously motivated by his lust, but he likes to listen to her. And we celebrate the passion of John the Baptist. And his passion is really a witness to the fact that the truth is important. And John's message, as we know, was to prepare people for the coming of Christ. And somebody might say, well, wasn't it foolish of John the Baptist to attack Herod, knowing that Herod is a powerful man, and Herodias as well? So it's clear Herodias had something against him, wanted to kill him. Why? Probably because of the same thing he was saying to Herod, that it's not lawful for you to be with this man, because he's not your husband. Philip is your real husband. So she was committing adultery. So why is it that John was speaking to Herod? Why is it that John was attacking Herod? Why couldn't you just have, you know, proclaimed Christ and pointed Christ out to people? Well, recall that the message of John really is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So in other words, John was sent to prepare the way, and the obstacle to the way is sin. So even in our own lives, the obstacle to God being more fully present within us is sin. Our inclination to sin. Now somebody might say, oh, well, I'm not a great sinner. That may be true, but we are all sinners, and the more we boot sin out of our lives, the better off we are, and the closer we can be to God. Unfortunately, we are all sinners, and mentioned in the Bible that the just man falls seven times a day. And often we give in to pride without even knowing it, and that's a huge obstacle to sin. So when we are proud, we think we know what's right, we think we are always right. So we're all prone to pride, we're all prone to sin. But all these sins, even small sins, they're obstacles to God's presence in our lives. So John was sent to prepare people by telling them to repent. The baptism John was performing was a baptism of repentance. And the message of repentance was for all people, including the great, including King Herod. King Herod was just kind of a puppet king. It was really the Romans who were in charge. So he was a king for the Jews, but he wasn't very religious himself. The other reason why it's important for John and even for us to be critical of people in positions of authority is because when leaders, whether they're political leaders or religious leaders, when they act inappropriately or don't teach the truth, they lead more people astray than the common people. So what a king or, or a, a political leader does has a greater impact on society. So all the more reason why John had to speak out against the immorality of Herod. So because Herod was leading an immoral lifestyle, others probably thought, oh, well, if King Herod can do it, so can I. Or if King Herod is so lustful, and you know, he was probably unfaithful even to, to Herodias, uh, you know, why can't I? So, and then the more the evil spreads or the evil practices, it tends to become norm. But just because it becomes norm, it doesn't mean it's okay. But a lot of people have that attitude. Well, everybody's doing it, therefore it should be okay, which is the attitude people have today. Remember that, say, that saying from St. Augustine, wrong is wrong even if everybody is doing it. Right is right even if no one is doing it. So it's very important for people to point out the errors or the flaws or the sins of religious leaders. So the message of John the Baptist for Herod and Herodias, you see, he was actually performing an act of charity by speaking out against their sins. He was trying to prepare Herod for Herod's conversion for Herod's acceptance of the Messiah when the Messiah makes his appearance. 
And maybe this is why Herod likes to listen to him, but he was confused because he was torn in two, he was being pulled in two different directions, his sinful lifestyle, but also there was probably some appeal of what John was saying. Now, if John hadn't been killed, it's possible, possible, that Herod may have converted because of the influence of John. And so the, the martyrdom of John the Baptist is kind of an example for us that we should be willing to suffer for the sake of the truth. And it's not just the truth of our belief in Christ. It's not just our religious truths, but also moral truths. And like John, we do have an obligation to proclaim moral truths because if we don't, evil spreads. Evil destroys lives. Evil will keep people from accepting Christ. Evil will keep people from making it to heaven for all eternity. Evil will drag people down into hell. So if we care about people and we say we are Christians and we have love for our fellow neighbor, then we need to speak out. And we need to speak out against especially politicians or people in positions of authority. And one of the ways in which we do this is by how we vote. So John was saying, Herod, it's not right for you to take your brother, uh, your brother's, brother Philip's wife as your own. Today, we can say, mothers, it's not right for you to take the child in your womb to kill it. It's a far greater sin. But it's kind of like it's become so commonplace, people are just okay with it. We've kind of become desensitized to it. Kind of the attitude, well, wrong is wrong, but we've accepted it, we've tolerated it, we're okay with it. Our politicians approve it, and we're going to vote for these politicians. No, we can't do that. If we vote for a politician who supports abortion when there is an alternative candidate who doesn't or supports it less, then we are guilty of all those murders of the child in the womb. So yes, we understand that it's difficult for a young woman who becomes pregnant unexpectedly, but you know, there's all kinds of organizations that help them, and unfortunately, society doesn't make them aware of all the organizations that are there to help them or to allow them to give their child up for adoption. So one of the reasons they're pushing abortion so much is because they want to reduce world populations. So, Yes, they, they talk about global warming, but they really want to reduce world population, not just because of global warming, but because they say, well, this is all we have. They don't believe in the afterlife. They don't believe in God. They believe we're just biological processes and we're overpopulating the earth. Therefore, let's preserve the earth. Let's reduce populations. So they push abortion. So we need to be aware of this and, and we need to speak out against abortion because if we don't, people are, are going to hell. You know, I remember seeing a, a video about the topic of abortion and how Satan loves it. Satanists actually want to participate in abortion. They, they love that, John. They want the blood on their hands because they offer these aborted babies as sacrifices to Satan in order to gain power for themselves. But it was pointed out that, that Satan, his real victory is not so much in the killing of the innocent child. That is a great victory for him, yes. But his real victory is in the guilt, the sin that the mother commits and whoever else participates or approves or supports the abortion. Because that is a moral sin. And many women have a hard time forgiving themselves even though God has forgiven them, even though the priest has told them.